Hi, this is Dr. Rudresh. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical Microbiology Guide. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. In this session, we will study the anti streptolysin O test. Streptolysin O is an oxygen labile hemolytic exotoxin. This is produced by group A streptococci, that is Streptococcus pyogenes, and also by some of the strains of group C and group G streptococci. Streptolysin O is highly immunogenic and hence it stimulates the production of anti-streptolysin O antibodies. The presence of anti-streptolysin O antibodies in the blood indicate the previous group A streptococcal infection. Almost 3 to 6 weeks is required for the ASO to be formed after the infection. The non-superative complications of group A streptococci like acute rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis occurs after 3 to 6 weeks of infection. The ASO titers are usually elevated in streptococcal upper respiratory tract infections while in skin infections like pyoderma there will not be much elevation in the ASO responses. The normal titers of ASO will be high among the children because of the frequent streptococcal infection. The demonstration of anti streptolysin O in the blood is used as diagnostic marker for rheumatic fever and scarlet fever. ASO test is widely used in clinical practice to diagnose the antecedent streptococcal infections. The test was first devised by Todd and hence we express the ASO titers in Todd units. The ASO titers can be detected by various methods. The original method of ASO estimation is by neutralization test. This is the reference method in which the ASO present in the patient blood will neutralize the streptolysin O thereby preventing the lysis of RBCs. Nowadays the neutralization test is replaced by the latex agglutination test. The sensitivity of latex agglutination test is very low. In the recent days the latex agglutination test has been replaced with the nephilometric and turbidometric method of ASO estimation. Now let's see the video demonstration of ASO latex agglutination test. Commercially available kits will provide ASO reagent, positive and negative control sera, the dilutional buffer, slide and applicator sticks. We require glass marking pencil, micro pipette and the tips. The test can be done qualitatively and quantitatively. So now we will see the qualitative estimation of ASO. The slide is labeled for positive control, negative control and test sample. Now we will add one drop of positive control to the well and a drop of negative control we will add a drop of serum or we can add the volume of the serum as described by the kit literature in this case I am adding 50 microliter of the test serum now we will add one drop of the ASO reagent to each of the circles. Once the reagent is added, we have to mix the reagents using separate applicator stick for each samples. After mixing, rock the slide to and fro for 2 minutes. Look for the clumping of latex particle in the test sample. If you see a agglutination, 
then it indicates the test sample contains ASO titers of more than 200 tolerance. If the qualitative test is positive, then we have to continue with the semi-quantitative estimation of the ASO. Semi-quantitative estimation of ASO is done by diluting the serum with physiological saline buffer. The physiological saline buffer provided will be 20x concentration. Hence, we need to dilute the buffer before we use it. 50 microliter of 1x buffer is added to each of the 6 circles in which we are going to dilute the test serum. To the first circle, we will add 50 microliter of the serum. So, when we mix the 50 microliter of serum with 50 microliter of the saline, the final dilution will be 1 in 2. So, now from the first circle, we will transfer 50 microliter to second circle. So, like this, we will go on diluting the serum from 1 in 2, 1 in 4, 1 in 8, 1 in 16, 1 in 32 to 1 in 64. After the dilution, we will add the ASO latex reagent one drop to each of the serum dilutions. Once the ASO reagent is added to the diluted serum, we will mix the reagent and serum using applicator stick. The serum has to be mixed from the highest dilution. That is, we start from 1 in 164, then continue with 1 in 32, 1 in 16, 1 in 8, 1 in 4 and 1 in 2. After mixing, we will gently rock the slide to and fro for 2 minutes. This will lead to the agglutination of streptolysin O coated latex particles with the ASO antibodies which are present in the patient serum. Now you can appreciate the latex particles agglutinated at 1 in 2, 1 in 4, 1 in 8 and even at 1 in 16. Now we will see how to derive the ASO titers by using the semi-quantitative test. ASO titers are calculated by using the formula the highest dilution of the serum showing agglutination multiplied by sensitivity of the test. Sensitivity of the test is usually defined by the kit manufacturers. Manufacturers will adjust the ASO latex reagent sensitivity to detect the minimum amount of ASO antibodies in the undiluted samples. The kit sensitivity varies from region to region. This is because of the variation in the baseline titers of the ASO titers in different regions. In India, the ASO kits are manufactured with a sensitivity of 200 tordinates. Any titer above 200 tordinates, we should suspect the acute rheumatic fever. Now we will calculate the ASO titers for our sera. So we saw the agglutination at 16 dilution. Hence, we will multiply it by the sensitivity of the test that is 200 tordinate to give a ASO titers of 3200 tordinates per ml. In an endemic area, a single positive test above the normal range should be considered as diagnostic of acute rheumatic fever. Whereas in non-endemic areas, we require two samples to be taken at an interval of two to three weeks and we have to demonstrate two-fold rise in the ASO titers for diagnosis. For children, the cutoff value of ASO titers for diagnosis of rheumatic fever is kept little bit higher than the titers for adults. So in Indian scenario, more than 400 tordinates for children should be considered as acute rheumatic fever and for adults, more than 200 tordinates should give a suspicion of acute rheumatic fever. The advantage of ASO test is this is best standardized, most reproducible and most universal and a two-fold rise in the antibody titers will give a definitive diagnosis of rheumatic fever among the patients. 
The disadvantages of the test are only 80 to 85 percent of the patients with acute rheumatic fever show elevated azotitis. Rest of the 15 to 20 percent of the cases they show false negative results. Azotitis will not be raised in skin infection. False negative results are seen in hyperlipidemia and false positive results are seen in myeloma, hypergammaglobulinemia, liver disorders, autoimmune diseases with elevated rheumatoid factor. In addition to azotitis, if we do anti-DNS B antibody detection, then it will help in the confirmation of preceding streptococcal skin infection. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe and press the bell button for more videos.